what's going on guys welcome back to the channel um, today I've got a video I wanted to do about summertime fishing um, summertime can be an incredible time of the year to find fish it can also be a really really hard time to find fish with uh, you guys know it's it's hot um, you got all kinds of boaters out there on the water you got your pontoons and ski boats and jet skis and it, it can get very very crowded um, it, you know some some guys struggle and I've been there I've had those summers that I've struggled to find fish but I wanted to kind of break down the uh, handful of baits that I like to use once we get into you know middle of the summer and uh, got some kind of unique baits and, and kind of uh, my personal approach that I take for summertime fishing and uh, maybe it'll help you guys out so let's get to it so to start off um, for some of you guys that don't know when those fish get done spawning and we move into the heart of summer once you're that water temp you know gets into the mid 70s even 80 you know you're you're in the heart of summer and a wave of fish move out there deep you know go to that main lake but you also have a population of fish that will go right back um, up shallow in those creeks up in those shallow pockets and those fish will live dirt shallow you know up until you know fall up until that water starts cooling off and those fish will move on out and start feeding back up again but um, don't don't take that for granted now. I mean, don't think that every one of those fish go out there deep. You know, everybody's talking about, oh, you, you, you got a fish out there 18 foot or deeper. You know, it's, it's not true. I mean, there's a whole bunch of fish that stay up there shallow. If, the, if your lake has the cover to hold those fish, they will go up there and stay, I promise you. So what I want to do is first, I'm going to go through my deep off, offshore and I'll explain the whole offshore deal as we go through this. I'm gonna go through my deep water baits and then we'll move to the shallow water baits. And some of these baits that I'm gonna talk about are um, baits you can throw deep or shallow. Um, you might have to tweak them a little bit, but some of them are multi-purpose baits. But the number one bait that if I can catch them on this bait, this is one I'm gonna throw. And that is a deep crankbait. I'm, it's no secret, everybody loves to go out there on the ledges and off those deep points and throw a deep diving crankbait. Now, I will be the first to tell you, I am not the best crankbait fisherman out there. Um, right now, I mean, if you guys can't see that, these are six sets Ds. Everybody and their mother throws a six sets D. That's all, that's all I heard about was, you gotta be throwing a six sets D. Six sets D. Or nothing so I picked them up and I've caught fish on them I have but what I'll tell you is the more and more people that throw this six XD the harder it is to catch them on it now I know that strike team has come out with a hard knock version of it and a silent version I haven't even bought those just because I've found that I can throw other baits to trigger these fish in the bite um, one of them being the Rapala uh, this is a DT20. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with the Rapala line, they've got DT, I believe, a, all the way from a four. I could be wrong. Comment below. If, um, I think it's either a four or six. I believe it's a four. All the way up to a DT20 uh, or 22 even, maybe. Um, but the, the Rapala line is a really good option. Also, Norman. All you old school guys know about the Norman. The Norman is a killer. Don't let the old, the old school bait fool you. It still smashes. And the reason I'm, I'm wanting you guys to see these baits is don't always throw the same bait that everybody and their brother's throwing. Pick something different. Pick up an old school bait or pick up something like the Rapala that instead of this 6XD that's just coming through there and, you know, it's knocking everywhere and you know real aggressive and all that this rapala is not that aggressive it's more of a i mean it's a silent bait it's got just a i mean almost silent it's got a little bitty rattle in it not a very aggressive action and this bait will smash those fish that have always just seen a six sets d their you know whole life so that's one tip 
the other one I'll tell you is when you are cranking in the summertime, I am burning this bait as fast as I can go. I usually throw a uh, like a six eight to one gear ratio, 12 pound line, and I'm as fast as I can reel. I'm not even worried about, you know, if I hit a rock, trying to pause it, none of that. I am constantly burning, 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 and I'm trying to get these fish to react. And in the summertime, a lot of these fish are schooled up, and if you can get that first fish to react, that activates that school and it's as fast as you can go and so that's why if i've got a crankbait in my hand in the summertime i am not sitting there just trying to slow wind it i'm i am burning as fast as i can go and i promise you're not going to burn it faster than these fish they will come and get it um the and this also goes for shallow crank crankbaits too um like i said this is one of these baits that um this is for you shallow water guys as well. I mean, I've got a square bill. This is a Spro uh, Speed Demon, something I can move incredibly fast. And this is another Rapala. This is a DT8. You know, that's one of the, uh, in that same uh, DT line, um, incredible bait. And like I said, these are for you shallow guys that want to crank. When you pick these baits up, do not stop. Burn it, I mean, just as fast as you can go. Um, every once in a while, yes, I may, I may hit a pause, but it's for a split second. I mean, I'm burn, 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 stop, burn, burn, burn. That's that's all I'm gonna do. Constantly trying to get those fish to react. So colors on that, I keep it really, really simple. Um, if I, if if I think those fish are uh, being really, really aggressive, you know, I'll try the your bright chartreuse, blues, those sort of things. Um, but if the water's like real clear or the fish are um, really not acting like they're wanting to bite real good, I'll go to something more of a natural, you know, just natural shad colors, it, you know, anything whites and pearls, stuff like that, just more natural. I it seems to, uh, I seem to get more bites on the more translucent natural colors, but for whatever reason, I still get a, big bite on your really really bold colors I'm not sure why that is but that's just the way it is for me moving on that's the prank baits um my next thing that i love to throw is a swim bait now i'll be the first to tell you i'm not a very um good like giant swim bait fisherman you know anything past like six inches i'm i'm I don't have much confidence in it just because I haven't learned that and I you know I'm waiting to bring that to y'all until I feel 100% confident in you know the big swim baits but the swim baits I'm talking about are more of your finesse swim baits like this is a, a Largo shad the 3.5 inch on a uh, just a swim bait jig head this is the dirty jigs uh, finesse swim bait head this is 3 8 ounce this is my go-to. I mean, 12 pound line, I've even thrown 10 pound if I'm trying to get there a little, out there a little bit deeper, or if I'm on you know, really, really clear body of water. But the swim bait, for me, goes hand in hand when I'm on those crankbait fish, and you know, I've, I've busted a school up, and I've caught you know, six or seven of those fish, and they're not really eating, wanting to eat that crankbait anymore. I'll pick this swim bait up, throw it out there, let it hit bottom, hop it up one time and just start slow rolling it. And I have caught so many fish and big fish on a finesse swim bait in the summertime. Um, and this is one that you can throw out there, I mean, 30 foot, or you can be out there, you know, four foot of water. It, you, all you need to do is change the uh, size of the head. Most of the time, I'm gonna throw a three eighths ounce. That seems to be good for me and that uh, eight foot out to, about 15 or 16 foot once you get out there a little bit deeper or you're you might be dealing with a little bit of wind or current um, I do bump it up to a half ounce just to keep that bait down in the water column but that right there is a must in the summertime absolutely if you have any kind of uh, water clarity you know that you can see it at least you know a foot or two down do not go out without a swim bait it I promise you it smashes slowing down on those deep fish i've got two baits the first one is the tried and true shaky head gotta have a shaky head 
your brush piles, um, those humps, you can throw it on the ledges, you can throw it out there in the offshore grass, you can throw it everywhere. Um, this is another Dirty Jigs, uh, this is their RT style, uh, I think it's uh, Canterbury Shaky Head, and a net bait T Mac. This is my go to. Um, that's the go-to shaky head uh, worm for me, always, a net bait T-Mac. And guys, like all my videos, I'm going to put all of this stuff in the uh, description, so don't stress out if I'm not going full in-depth in colors and weights and line size and all that. I promise I'll put on every every technique I'm talking about, I'll have all of that stuff in the description. But again, that's the net bait T-Mac. Um, if you buy a new pack of these, they will be already infused with bait fuel, which is awesome. And I'm waiting on my first order of these to come in. So, Shaky Head is a must for me. Again, this is um, this is one of those baits too that you can throw in a foot of water. Or you can throw in 35 foot of water. It doesn't matter. You might just have to change your weights a little bit, change your line size up. But Shaky Head is a must for those. Um, real lethargical fish, you know, if you're, you know, trying to soak this bait in a brush pile, anything like that. Guys, y'all know, check your head, got to. The last offshore deep, deep water bait I've got is a big curly tail. This is one of my favorite things when they get on a big worm. Um, and this is one I usually pick up is the net bait C-Mac. This is a, uh, it's 11 inch you know, curly tail worm, awesome worm. They've got great colors, all of that, just incredible. Um, this is one of those things I'm gonna pick up and I'm gonna drag around and try to pick up a few more of those fish that I was throwing the crankbait and the swimbait on. Um, you can also throw this in, you know, brush piles and all that too with that shaky head. Um, it's just, gosh, it, that is a incredible bite when you get on it. You know, big rod, I'm usually throwing 18 or 20 pound line, um, three eighths or half ounce weight and a big worm hook and you're just jacking these fish it is that is a killer killer way to catch some some deep summertime fish so now let's switch gears so we've talked about how i like to approach those you know deep water fish whatever deep is relative to you and your body of water now one of my favorite ways to catch them in the summertime is up shallow and when guys when i'm talking about shallow i mean a lot of times I don't catch my fish no deeper than two foot of water in the heart of summer. I mean, water temps to be almost 90 degrees and I'm catching them in a foot of water. Um, it is something you guys have got to go and look at this summer. If you guys have not figured that out, you've got, you're, you're missing out. It is, I'm telling you, it might sound crazy. Trust me on this. So few of the baits that I like to use and, um, I talked about speed in the crankbait, you know, on those deep fish, burning it as fast as you can. When you guys go up there shallow, I, I personally think that I'm either going to go as fast as I possibly can, or I'm gonna slow way, way, way down. For me, I don't seem to get a lot of bites when I'm kind of in that in-between, you know, slow rolling, you know kind of moving fast but then i might slow down it, it's either one or the other i'm in totally two different ends of the spectrum for me up shallow in the summer times now a couple baits um if you want to move if you want to power fish and move quick um i mentioned these the two crankbaits you know shallow crankbaits some square bills something like that that you can move fast that is an incredible option the other one that i like to throw are frogs. I love to throw a frog in the summertime. If your lake has grass, has matted grass or scattered grass, any kind of that um, shallow vegetation, you guys need to be throwing a frog. Um, and I've got a couple different ones. Um, I've got two, both of these are snag proof frogs and these are spro frogs. And I'll talk about these real quick. Um, the, the spro regular you know regular nose frog this is something i'm going to throw in that thick thick cover um i can move you know fairly quick but this is going to come through that cover a whole lot better than the popping frog 
the only time I'm throwing a popping frog in the summertime is when those fish are really, really aggressive up there shallow. A lot of times for me, the frog bite in the summertime, I'm having to work a little bit slower than normal. Um, so that's why generally the popping frog doesn't do as good for me as the regular, you know, traditional walking frog does. So that's why I've got more of these on this video than the popping frog, but the snad proof by far, it is one of my favorite frogs. Uh, incredibly soft, great hooks. But this is one I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw up there on those cheese mats, if you guys are familiar with that, like something on the Tennessee River. Um, I'm gonna throw it up under overhanging bushes, um, up under docks, alongside of docks, anything like that. Frog is a must. Um, the next thing, and real quick before I move on for this, the one thing to look at if when you go up there shallow in the summertime is cover. You have got to be, you, you just can't go down a bare bank expecting to catch these fish up there shallow. If they're up there shallow, I promise you they are in the best cover available. And that, whether that's a dock, um, it could be matted grass, it could be bushes up under trees, any of that. The other thing I'm looking at is shade lines. Shade lines are huge in the summertime. And what I'm talking about is if, if you go in the back of a pocket and it's say 12, one o'clock, uh, you know, in the afternoon and you see that one bank that's, that's casting out shade, you know, eight foot, you know that that bank has had shade on it majority, majority of the time. Now, those fish, it is, it, that's the only time I know I just said that those fish are looking for cover, but they will also use that shade line. So you could have a just do nothing bank and all of a sudden you have one little cut in that bank that's got shade on it. Those fish are gonna sit right there in that shade. That's what they're gonna use as their cover. So I will go in up their shallow and target shade lines. And, and that's something that's gonna move throughout the day as the sun moves, you know, you guys know shades are gonna move on you but I will, don't count out the shade because those fish, I promise you, will sit in that shade line and will move with it as the day goes on. Throwing these frogs in the shade line is, is one of the ways to catch them. The other way that I like to catch those fish is on topwater uh, hard baits. And I've got three, uh, three baits that I like to use for this technique. One of them is just a, you know, full-size walking bait. This happens to be the uh, Reaction Innovation Vitson. Incredible walking bait. Um, I want to use, if I am going to throw a topwater in those shade lines, a lot of times I'm not, I don't have but maybe four or five foot of that shade line to work with. So I don't want a bait that as soon as I throw up there and make a few, you know, turns of the, the reel that I'm out of that shade line. I want something that I can work that's going to stay in that shade line longer. And that's why that the walking bait for me, I mean, I can walk this bait incredibly slow and it's just gonna stay in that shade line a whole lot longer. So first one I'm gonna try is that full size walking bait. If they're not wanting to come up on a full size one and they're chasing smaller bait, that's when I'm gonna go to something like this. And if you guys haven't seen this, I, I can't believe I'm even showing this to you guys, but this is from Hedden, you uh, super spook guys. This is the just ultra finesse super spook is all it is. It's called a boyo, I believe that's how you pronounce it, but it's basically a three inch spook. Has the same same knock as a spook and walks incredible for only being three inches long. But when those fish are being a little bit more lethargic and chasing some smaller bait, I will go to this or I will throw a, a popper. This is a Berkeley uh, bullet pop any kind of uh, popping bait, this that's what I'd go to. And this, again, these are both baits that I can work really, really slow and really soak them in those shade lines. You can also, I mean, you can throw these guys up th out there in open water, but for me, during the summertime, these are baits I'm throwing up there, dirt shallow in those shade lines, in those little cuts. Um, maybe if there's a dock that's casting a whole lot of shade, I might throw it up beside a dock, anything like that. 
the last two baits are when I'm wanting to just really, really slow down up shallow. And I'm going to, the first thing I'm gonna do is flip. Um, I'm, I mean, I guess both of these are flipping and, and pitching, but um, the first thing I like to do is if you've got that, uh, if you've got some matted grass and in, in up there real shallow or, you know, some, some real shallow trees even, anything like that, something that you can punch you can still catch them flipping this time of year ultra ultra shallow pick you up a some sort of creature bait um you know big weight half you know one ounce one and a quarter ounce big heavy rod and go punching mats that's that's a great option for me i have got a whole lot of confidence in pitching up a half ounce archie head jig and just going to work and flipping everything in sight. I don't care if it's a rock that sticks out of, you know, off a of bank a little bit, or it's a lay down tree or some bushes or dots, anything that I can skip this bait up in, <clears throat> that's what I'm gonna do up there shallow. If I, can't, if I can't get them on reaction baits, nine times out of 10, I'm gonna pick up this jig and I'm gonna put my head down and and go to work and this is something i'm gonna fish ultra ultra slow um i'm you know pulling up to a dock and i'm skipping up under there letting it hit the bottom might hop it up a few times i might just drag them out i mean i'm trying to pick apart every single piece of structure but a jig in the summertime is a must you can also throw this guy out there offshore um for me i don't have a whole lot of confidence unless it's brush piles um, for me, I don't really do as good just dragging this out there on those ledges. Um, if it's brush piles, that's different, but um, for me, a jig is a shallow water, flipping boat docks, flipping trees, flipping grass, anything in the summertime. That is a must. Um, I keep my colors simple on my jigs. Uh, this is just green pumpkin blue. If I've got a little bit of color in the water, I might throw you know, some brown and purples other than that, just, just super simple. But a chunk style trailer, something that I can skip around, flip around, just, just ultra, just simple. So that is all the baits I've got for summertime. I know this has been a uh, long video, a lot of baits thrown at you, but guys, yeah, summertime can be incredible. Um, once you, if, if you guys love offshore fishing, go out there, graph, locate those big schools of fish, take your big crankbaits, your swim baits, your big worms, and go smash those fish. If you like to go up there shallow and you want to pick up a big rod, heavy line, um, guys go up there and do that and don't be afraid to go shallower than ever. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you for watching.